Let's start with a retrospective of day 15. This code obviously is not going to work for low values of n, so let's change that to a less than or equal to n. And instead of x's prime here, we can actually do a reverse of the first n elements of x's. And then we actually don't need x's prime at all. It's even worse in part b, where we actually have a bug because of our one-based system. We should actually be taking i minus 1 here to get the correct value. To preserve the int map implementation, I'm going to commit that into the repository as an f' function in the same file. Okay, now I actually noticed that within control monad, there was a zip with m underscore function, and that's going to allow us to actually rewrite this for m and remove v0. Let's move on to day 16 now, and we have a puzzle now that involves a lot of parsing and then some list manipulation. So let's see how we go. We're going to start, as usual, by importing our advent of code module, and then this time we use interact g, because our input is split up into groups of blank line separated lines. Uh, we first need to grab our input, and we should be able to have a look at it. And as you can see, we're fetching the lines and we're grouping those into the sections. We can split those up directly in the f function. And then let's have a look at the first group. And you can see we can get the attributes all in a list of their own. So let's make an attribute parser that's going to take each of those lines and give us the range of values that's valid for that line. We're going to return that as a list of ints. So the first thing we're going to do is we can split on the colon. And the first part of that is then going to be the name, and the second part will be the rules. Let's have a quick look at that by mapping our parser across the attributes that we've got. We should be able to then split the rules on the or. But first, let's grab the rules out by pattern matching on the result of the colon split. We can then split on the word or from the input, and that should give us back the ranges that we need this attribute to follow. And then we can split those by mapping another split on the dash character. After doing that second split, we can map read to get those two values back as integers. We can make a function that again uses pattern matching to grab out the low and high values from each of those ranges and use that to actually give back a list of the valid numbers for that rule. We can then map this valid function over our rules and then we should concatenate them together but we could do that together in one step using concat map. The output of this should be a long list of numbers for each attribute. We need to parse the tickets as well, so let's move our parsing to a where clause. We can do both parses in one step by matching against a tuple on both sides. The ticker parser should be quite simple because we just have a list of integers separated by commas. So we can use split on comma followed by a map read to read them. Let's have a look at those tickets. And we get an error here because the first line of tickets is a description line, it's a heading. And so we need to just ignore the first element of that list. And we have to do the same for the main ticket as well. In fact, because the main ticket is just a single item, we can also put a colon underscore afterwards to match that tail of the list. The tail should actually be an empty list, so instead we could actually put in the two items of the list explicitly. This will then make sure we crash if we get an unexpected input. Now, the puzzle asks us to find attributes that are not valid for any rule. And we've already got the list 
of valid numbers in each rule. So we just need to concatenate those together to get the valid numbers in any rule. We can use nub to make sure we don't have any duplicates. Once we have that, we can get all the attributes from every ticket by just concatenating them all together. We can then filter that list for those attributes that are not valid numbers by using the notLM function, which is just not and lm put together. The puzzle asks us then to sum those invalid numbers together to get our result. Before we check that, I'd like to up the ante a little bit, take things up a notch, and learn some Haskell along the way. Let's change the output of this to a function from int to bool. Instead of our valid range of numbers, I'm going to replace that with a function called inRange. It's also going to pattern match on low and high, but it's also going to take an x parameter, which we compare to make sure it's within the range of the low and high values. We need to replace the concat map now, and instead we can map in range over our rules, which will give us back a list of functions from int to bool. If we note that functions are monads, then we know we can sequence those in the same way, and we can use map m then to get us back a function from int to list of bool. We can compose that with the listwise or function to end up with a function from int to bool as required. Back in our f function, attribs is now a list of int to bool functions. We can use sequence again then to make that into an int to list of bool function. And again, we can compose this with listwise or to provide us a function that takes an integer and tells us whether it matches any of the rules. However, we need the opposite of that, and we're going to call it matches no rules, and we're just going to compose not on the front of that. We should then be able to update our filter to simply use match no rules instead. This should hopefully give us back the same result as before, and it looks like it does. So let's check that. And we get our first gold star, finally. For part two, we need to determine which attribute description corresponds to which field on the ticket. So the attribute parser can't throw that away now, and we need to return that, and we do that as a tuple with the rule function. We simply grab that out there and return a tuple. Okay, so because attributes in our f function is now a tuple, we need to map second over the attributes to get back those functions. But sequence and map together, as we know, is just map m. We now need to filter out all the tickets with invalid fields. And this is actually slightly different to what we had to do for part one, but we can reuse our matches no rules function. An invalid ticket is one in which any of its fields are invalid, meaning a valid ticket is one where not any of the rules are broken. Let's add in the ticket parser for the main ticket. Once we've done that, we need to work out how we can process each of the ticket fields in turn. It would be great if we could somehow get the tickets into columns so that for each column, which represents all of the numbers in the tickets for a given field, we can test all of the attributes against that column to see if those attribute descriptions and the rules pertaining to those could possibly fit for the numbers given in those tickets. Fortunately, Haskell provides us such a function, and it's called transpose. Let's have a quick look at that. As you can see, it flips rows and columns, which means that we can take a column of tickets, that is, the numbers for each of the fields of the ticket, 
and map those across a filter attributes function, which is going to take that list and give us back the possible attributes that could fit. So how is that filter attributes function written? So we're going to take our list of numbers, which are all of the numbers for a particular field on all the tickets. And we can use that to create a filter for the attributes. For each attribute, we split out the name and rule, and we're going to call the rule R. And we can run all of R over X's. And all simply runs R on each of the X's, and the Boolean result is ANDed together. That means that the filter will keep all of the attributes that are possible for this field when tested against all of the tickets. Once we've done that, we don't actually need the rule anymore, so we can map first over those attributes just to get the name back. Let's have a look at our list of possible attributes for each field. Well, we're not done yet, it seems and it looks like we've got lots of attributes that are possible on each field. Although I do notice actually there's one there which has only got one possibility. So let's write a function that can remove any field where there's only one possibility from all the other fields because we know that it can't be those ones. So to get the list of known ones we find the fields where there's only one possibility. That is, that the list of possibilities has a length of one. Once we've got that, we need to filter the rest of the list, but we need to keep them in the right order. So we still need to go through each item of this list one by one and map across it some sort of filter. Let's give that a, a name so that we can implement that separately. So we're going to get this list of names and we can't just remove completely the ones that are known because we need to keep them in the right order. So we need to test again to see if the length of those name lists is one. If it's not, then we need to filter out all of those names which we know belong to another field. So we filter with not alum again and Otherwise, we just keep the single name on its own. Let's try running this against the attributes. And hopefully that should make our attribute list a little bit smaller. We can try running that again and hopefully it should change again. It would be nice if we had a function that could just keep iterating over our remove known functions until we got to a stable state. And of course we do, we have our converge function, which does exactly that. And it's done the trick, we now know the name of each field. Let's call that field names. We need to then associate the name with each of the fields in our ticket. And we can use zip to do that. The field names are actually coming back as a list of lists, so let's also map head over that to make sure that we just get the name and not a list with a single name in it. The puzzle asks us to consider only the fields whose names start with departure. We can filter using the isPrefixOf function over the second part of the zip, which is the field name. We should then extract out the first part of the zip which is the value for those fields, and then calculate the product of those values to get our final answer. Let us now check that answer and confirm that we have a second gold star for today. Happy Haskelling!